Hello and welcome to Ice Warp. This is the second video in our setting up a mail server series of tutorials. In this video we'll be looking at creating and using domains in Ice Warp. When using Ice Warp there are five possibilities for domains. Standard, domain alias, backup domain, distributed domain, and ETRN. ETRN is very rare today and was mostly used for dial-up connections, but it is possible in Ice Warp. We won't be covering ETRN in this video. The standard domain is the default when setting up Ice Warp and is the simplest type of domain. When mail comes into the system, it will look at the domain to find your server. Then it will locate the correct user within the domain and deliver. The second type of domain is the domain alias. This allows a company to use two or more domains for the same users. When mail goes into the Ice Warp server with a domain alias, the message comes into Ice Warp, looks at Domain 2, and makes sure it's active. The mail will realize Domain 2 is an alias and redirect to Domain 1. It will find the correct user under Domain 1 and the mail will be delivered. Users are effectively able to have two mail accounts within the same mailbox. The benefits of having a domain alias in Ice Warp are that it allows you to manage two domains as if they're one, and it allows you to have multiple domains in Ice Warp while only paying for one. Here's how to set up a domain alias. First, go to Domains and Accounts in the Administrator console. Then right-click and create a second new domain. Next, click the Options tab and set the type to Domain Alias. Under Value, type the domain you want emails to be sent to when someone emails the domain alias. Now all users under Domain 1 can receive email when somebody emails their Domain 2 email address. Any new users we add to Domain 1, accessed by clicking on the user icon, will automatically be able to receive email from all domain aliases we've previously set up. You may want to create users who can only receive emails through Domain 2. This can easily be done in IceWork. Just click on the user icon under Domain 2 and create the new user. The new user will only be able to receive emails under Domain 2. The third type of domain we'll look at is the backup domain. A backup domain setup is similar to a domain alias, but it really comes into play when you're using either two IceWorp servers or placing an IceWorp server in front of a second server like Microsoft Exchange. When an email is addressed to a backup domain, an email will look at the backup domain to make sure it's active. After it verifies the domain is active, it will realize the domain is a backup. If the user exists on the backup server, they will receive the email. If the user isn't on the backup server, however, the email will be forwarded and stored to whatever domain you specify. There are several reasons why some businesses use two servers. They could be using the first IceWarp server to filter a large volume of email for spam or viruses. They could also be using a public IP server to forward email to a non-public one. Most commonly, however, businesses use the second server in the backup server chain as a redundant duplicate server in case the first server has technical issues. To set up a backup domain, first right-click and create a new domain. We'll call this one backup.com. Go to the Options tab of your new domain. Set the type to Backup Domain. Under the Value field, enter the domain you want emails to be forwarded to. The difference here from a domain alias is that the value field is pointing to a non-local server. You can create users under the Backup Domain just like any other domain, and any incoming mail addressed to them will be received. If the mail comes into the Backup server and its intended recipient isn't on the Backup server, however, it will be forwarded to the domain you've specified in the Value field. The fourth and final type of domain we'll look at is the distributed domain. A distributed domain is similar to a backup domain, but it's for offices in multiple geographic locations, each of which has a different email server and different email users, but all of whom need to be under the same domain. Running all these geographically separated users off a single server could be done, but it could result in sluggish email performance. This is where a distributed domain with multiple servers is used. When a message is sent to a user in a distributed domain, the server sending the message will perform a DNS lookup, which will point to one of the IceWorp servers in the distributed domain. The message is essentially passed along each server until it reaches the right person on the right server. 
If the user isn't on any of the domains in your distributed email network, the email will bounce. To set up a distributed domain, first right click and create a new domain. We'll call this one distributeddomain.com. Click on the Options tab for your new domain. Set the type to Distributed Domain. Under the Value field, you can specify the geographically separate servers you want to be a part of your distributed domain network. These can be entered as IP addresses or host names. Now any emails addressed to our domain will be passed along until they find the correct user on the correct server. Now we've covered all four domains you can set up in IceWar. Specifying these domains is done under the Options tab in the Management section. While we're discussing domains, let's take a look at the other tabs and what they do. Limits allows you to create custom limits for either individual users or the entire domain. This can include limiting the number of emails that can be sent, the amount of data that can be sent, or the allowed mailbox size. Policies allows you to choose what IceWarp services the domain and users have available, such as voice, instant messaging, and text messaging. If you have ActiveSync, you can customize it under this tab as well. Many IceWarp administrators like to check off the IM Shared Roster box. This puts new users automatically into your chat roster and automatically makes sure everyone in your server domain is a part of the chat roster. Under the Options tab, in addition to specifying the type of domain you want, you can set each domain to send out using their own host name to help avoid their email being tagged as spam. This is mostly needed in a multi-tenant environment where there are multiple domains on the same server. DKIM can also be set up under Management. Please refer to the support article for configuring DKIM. Directory service is probably the biggest decision after deciding which domain type you prefer in IceWorks. Many organizations use Active Directory. The Directory Service tab allows you to synchronize users and groups from Active Directory. This would allow the user and password information to be the same in both IceWarp and Active Directory, so the user doesn't have to remember different passwords for his PC and email. You can also enable single sign-on with the Directory Service tab. Please refer to the support article for configuring Active Directory synchronization. The Rules tab allows you to generate very specific rules for your domain. Lastly, the Information tab will give you all the data about your domain that's valuable to you as an administrator, such as what type of DNS records need to be set up and which ports are needed to run IceWorp fully. It can be used for quick diagnostics to check that you have everything configured correctly. Errors will appear in red type if there's a problem. Thanks for tuning in. In our next video, we'll be covering creating and managing users in IceWorp.